Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm a picture book illustrator. And today we're going to do an art activity inspired by one of my books. Uh, this book here actually, it's called Shaping Up Summer. It's written by Lizanne Flatt, illustrated by myself and published by Owl Kids. And inside here is one of my favorite pages. It's a bird's eye view of a pond. And so today I was thinking maybe we could recreate a lily pad and a lily to accompany that lily pad using just paper, scissors, and glue. So let's get started. What you'll need to begin is a sheet of green paper and something to trace a circle with. I use a plate. So grab a green pencil crayon if you can or crayon or whatever you have on hand and you're gonna trace around the plate and try to figure out where the center of your lily pad is. Uh, just eye it. This little dot here is gonna be a starting point for all of the textured veins we're gonna to add to our lily pad. And to do that, I'm just gonna draw from the dot outward to the edge of the circle. Sometimes it's nice to add little extra details to the shapes we make. There's just something really a lot more interesting about it that way. And as you know, in nature, there's a lot of small details you can add. So I think that's enough lines. What you're gonna do now is take scissors and cut around that handy little edge you made. And you know, because you had used a green pencil crayon, you don't see the edge as, well, as much. Okay, so. Now right now our lily pad looks more like a beach ball or the top of an umbrella. But if you think about it, um, the shape we need to make is sort of a Pac-Man shape. So if we think about it, all we need to do is take out a triangle of this and it'll look like a lily pad. So let's just color in the area maybe we want to cut and then make a little triangle. we are ready to start our flower. So let's stick this over here. And next you're gonna grab a white sheet of paper. And I'm gonna need you to find four different sizes of circles from your cabinet. Um, from your kitchen cabinet, that is. So you can see here I have a large, medium, down to small. And so to start um, with the white sheet, I'm gonna take this large one and jump over that one to this one, and I'm gonna trace these. And once again, I'm gonna use uh, a light color. So we have those two circles. Now what you're gonna do is grab a slightly different shade of white. Maybe it's gray or a light blue. In this case, I'm using this kind of gray color. And I'm gonna take those other two circle sizes and I'm gonna make their circle here as well. Okay, 
So now that I have uh, our circles, let's start cutting these out. Um, just to make it easier, I like to um, actually cut out the shape first. It's easier for me to cut when I cut a smaller piece out from the larger sheet. So with my scissors again, I'm going to cut this gray one. And I'm also going to cut around this other one before I cut it out. So your circles don't have to be perfect. It's just sort of a guide for your hand to move around. All right, so now we have, we have our two gray ones. Let's go back to our white and cut those out. Okay. So we're almost there. All right, so now I have my four sizes of circles. And so to make our flower, we're gonna be layering them on top of each other. And that's sort of why I made them different colors so that we can really see those layers. Um, but you know, it kind of doesn't look like a flower now, does it? It needs some little spikes around the edges, kind of like what petals are. So maybe on the underside of your circle, I'm gonna take a blue and I'm just gonna, I don't know, make some petals. Some people don't need to trace first, they can just cut it, and that's, that works perfectly well too. After all, there's no need for this to look perfect. Okay, so you can kind of see I have um, a little edge around, the petal edge. So now it's time to cut it. Just follow your line again, like before. With your scissors. Alright, so here's one layer of the flower done. And now we're going to do the other remaining circles in that same pattern. So now that I have all four pieces of my flower ready to go, I'm going to use tape or a glue stick and I'm going to um, layer them, kind of like this. So let's do that. Put a little dab just in the center of the back and you're going to put this piece on the largest piece, right in the middle. Next in line is the next size up. Once again, glue stick, just a dab there, and then stick it in the middle here. And our very last tiny piece, let's put some glue on the back. though we are missing something and that might be a little yellow center to our flower so let's grab some yellow and um, I'm just gonna use a hole punch because I have one here but you can also just cut another circle and you're gonna make it a little smaller than the others 
Okay, so now I have a small sun and uh, it's time to snip into it. So I'm gonna pretend it's the sun and I'm gonna cut out little wedges, kind of like I did with the lily pad. Kind of looks like a sun, doesn't it? All right, so I think that we should bend these little edges upright just to give our lily pad a little bit of dimension. That's a great thing about paper. You can just kind of form it to however you want it. Okay, little dab of glue. And we're going to stick it in the center of our flower here. Okay, so here's our flower. Uh, it's just about ready to go, but I have one more trick I want to show you, and that's to kind of make it pop out a little more. So what you're going to do is kind of look for those petals you, you cut out, and you're going to just bend them slightly upwards. There is our three-dimensional lily pad. and it's all ready to go on the lily pad leaf. So there's a lot of places you could um, put the lily. You could put it right in the center of your leaf or to the side. Um, but first, before we do that, let's consider a background for our pond. For that, you'll need um, a blue sheet of paper. Maybe we will use some tape for this, just in case we want to move it around again. So let's find a spot for the leaf. And we're going to place it somewhere on our sheet. Now we're going to do the same for our lily. So now that we've taped our lily pad down to the pond, it's time for you to imagine what other creatures might live in this pond alongside it. Um, if you think about it, ponds have a lot of different animals in them. There's fish, um, frogs, lizards, and a whole bunch of insects. So I think I'm going to put a dragonfly. This is one I made previously. Just put a little tape on the back in case you want to move him around. And find a nice landing spot for him. So now our lily pad is all finished. And oh my goodness, there are so many layers happening here. It's really nice to touch actually. Um, I can't wait to see what you come up with, so we'll see you guys next time. To learn more about the Math and Nature series, visit the links in the description. You'll find downloadable teacher's resource guides and print out art activities. Thanks for watching.